Hello everyone, intern Garth here. For today's confirmation lesson, we're going to be talking about Christianity and science. And more specifically, the question, can you be a Christian and still believe in the theory of evolution? Many people would say that these two things are totally incompatible, that if you believe in Genesis, you can't believe in evolution. And if you believe in evolution, then you can't believe in the biblical account of creation as told in Genesis. That it's black and white and there's no option to go uh, one way or, or to believe in both at the same time. So let's dive in. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the basic ideas of Christianity and evolution. And then we're going to look at how science views the beginning of the world and how the Bible views the beginning of the world. And hopefully what we'll conclude by the end is that the two views are totally compatible. And in fact, having both leads to a deeper and much more thorough understanding of the creation of the world. So I'd like to begin with a few moments of silence just to center ourselves. Um, and then I'll have a word of prayer and we'll get into the lesson. So get comfortable, take a few deep breaths, and then I'll begin us in prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, from the very beginning of time, you commanded the earth to bring forth vegetation and every fruit of every kind. You provide the sower with seed and give bread to eat. Grant, we pray, that this land, enriched by your bounty and cultivated by human hands, may be fertile with abundant crops. Then your people, enriched by the gifts of your goodness, will praise you unceasingly now and for all ages unending. Grant all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So in general, it is true to say that the way scientists talk about the origins of life is far different from the way or ways that the Bible pictures them. Many times people try to reconcile the biblical and scientific understandings. But reality is that's an impossible task. On the other hand, there shouldn't be any apologies for the differences between the two. It's okay that Genesis has a view of creation that's totally different from what science proclaims. It's okay that they're different because their focus is on two entirely different things. The Bible is focused on allowing its readers to develop a knowledge of the Creator and the place that human beings have in the world. Science, on the other hand, is generally focused on the details of what really happened. How did life come into being on this planet? In the Bible, whether you, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's actually two accounts of creation. Everyone's familiar with, you know, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But actually, that's, that creation account from Genesis 1 doesn't include the Garden of Eden which people also assume, affiliate with the creation of the world. The Garden of Eden is actually found in Genesis 2, when human beings are created from the dust and then placed in a garden to tend the creatures and, and the, the uh, plants and vegetation. And that's the famous story of um, Eve eating the apple and um, the, the first sin of humanity. So these are two different creation accounts that occur in the Bible, one in Genesis 1 and the other in Genesis 2. So how weird is it that the Bible describes creation in two different ways? At first thought, it might be a little bit disturbing. How can something be true if it's told in two different ways? But really, the Bible isn't meaning to tell us a blow-by-blow -blow account of exactly what happened. Instead, it's giving us themes about God's creation and God's creative force in the world and what God did to bring life into being. So it's the themes from the Genesis accounts that we should focus on above and beyond the, the uh, actual details and whether or not things happened exactly as the Bible tells them. So let's begin by talking a little bit about the scientific view of the origins of the world. If you asked a biologist how life on Earth began, they might say something like, it seems to have started about 3.5 billion years ago. 
We still don't know how the first living things got started, but somehow the right molecules came together to make a crude cell that could use chemicals for energy and successfully reproduce. We know that cells and then groups of cells began to develop because we find traces of them in ancient rocks. So in other words, you may have seen fossils at the science museum or studied them in school, but when we look at rock layers, we find fossils of different plants and animals. They are different from what we're familiar with today, and so we know that things on Earth, living things on Earth, have been changing over time. So in other words, we know that evolution has happened in some way or another. We may not know the details, but we know that it's happened. Even our blood and our DNA is evidence that evolution has happened because we're related to chimpanzees and gorillas, but have moved and evolved into a different and more intelligent life being. So let's contrast that then with the biblical views of the origins of the earth. If you ask the Bible how earth began, how life began on earth, it might say, if you're looking at Genesis 1, that heaven and earth are formed at God's commands. God created the sun, the sea, the dirt, animals, fish, and finally, God created human beings, telling them to be God's representatives in caring for the world. All this work in Genesis 1 takes place in six days, and then on the seventh day, God rests. If we look at Genesis 2, God creates man from the dust and breathes life into him. God then creates a garden and places the man there in order to care for it. God causes trees to grow, creates other animals from the ground, and finally, because the man needed a companion, creates a woman from the man's ribs. So that's Genesis 2, the Garden of Eden that we're familiar with. From the perspective of the Bible, God is wholly responsible for the creation of the cosmos. Human beings were created by God in the same state in which we exist today. So the Bible would say that early humans did not look or act any different from you and I, that they were created in the state that we are existing in now. Quite different from the scientific theory, which suggests that humans progressed and evolved over time. So these are totally different views of creation. And like I said at the beginning, if you look at them just at face value, they seem totally incompatible, that there's no way one could be reconciled with the other. What I'd like to suggest is that the different views working together give us a much deeper understanding of creation and what our purpose is in life. The scientific answers about the beginning of the cosmos are modern. They represent what we know in the 21st century, and we know a lot in the 21st century. They concentrate on how things happened, not on who might have caused them or why. Science, by practice, doesn't consider God at all, because it doesn't study God or use the idea of God to explain things. So science doesn't necessarily say that God didn't have a hand in that. this. They just don't factor God in, because it's not something that they use or can explain. The writers of Genesis, in a sense, were also using the best knowledge about the world that they had in their time. Thousands of years ago, people didn't know as much as we do about beginning of time, and we, they didn't have scientific methods that we have now. So Genesis represents their view, their attempt to explain what had happened to create the world. Thousands of years ago, the idea that God created the world was the only plausible explanation because there was so much about it that they didn't understand, and so they created stories to try and explain how that had happened. The purpose of the Bible isn't to tell us about fossils or the physical makeup of the sky. The purpose of the Bible is to proclaim that God created the world and God's creation is good. Rather than being a blow-by-blow -blow account of exactly how creation happened, the creation accounts in Genesis confirm without a doubt that God has a character and purpose that is bent towards life. God is the one who made all things by the word, and everything God made is good. God gives human beings a special place in the world and special responsibility to care for the world. God's intention is that people live together in peace. 
All of those things we can conclude without a shadow of a doubt from reading Genesis, that God created people and life is meant to be good and peaceful. So those truths that we can conclude from Genesis about God's will in creation do not necessarily contradict evolution and scientific thought. You can believe that evolution happened. Maybe God got it started. I think that's a a fair assessment to say for a Christian that somehow God set this life-giving process in motion and that God's intention was always that people would live in harmony with each other and care for creation and do good work. Though do, the other thing that's important to note is that though Genesis doesn't have modern science, it gives hints that can help us think about science. For example, in Genesis 1 chapter 11, God doesn't have plants appear out of nowhere, but instead has the earth bring them forth. This suggests that God, rather than creating things as they already were created, or creating things in their final state, God created the process and the basic chemicals to help produce living things. So in other words, in a sense, Genesis says that God set the process of creation in motion and then allowed it to act naturally. That, to me, sounds very consistent with the theory of evolution. And even in evolution, and as things have changed over time, God continues to be present with the people. That's another thing we can conclude from Genesis, that God is present with God's people, no matter what life on earth throws at them. So I hope this has helped you conclude that the biblical sense of creation and the scientific theory of evolution are not totally incompatible. As I mentioned, it's a very difficult question and one that's been argued for centuries. Our goal as Christians, however, should be to trust that God is working in the world and that God has always been working in the world. So despite the fact that human beings may have evolved from something completely different, that the whole process was part of God's overall plan for creation. We know from Genesis that God saw creation and said that it was good. And that's all we really need to know. So I wish we could have been together tonight to talk about this important topic. But since we can't, um, I've put together a Bible study and a couple of discussion questions for you. Um, so those will be uploaded as well um, and distributed by Anne and the learning team. Um, and I hope once we get together and are able to be in one place again, um, if you have any questions or, or want to discuss this further, please don't hesitate to reach out. I hope you all are staying safe and staying healthy, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.